Well, thank you very much for that. So first of all, my name is Victor Wazorek. I'm a managing security consultant with GuidePoint Security. Uh, I lead a team of penetration testers on the security assessments team. We do penetration testing, red teaming, vulnerability assessments, uh, social engineering, all that whole kind of gambit of activities there, uh, where we do that stuff day in and day out uh, for a lot of our clients. So when I was asked to help build this environment and kind of give some feedback on the vulnerabilities we were seeing, again, our focus is now not on the cool or sexy or elite, uh, you know, not on the, the custom malware or the fuzzing or any of that, but honestly, the easy stuff, the things that have been around for years, the things that are in Metasploit, that are well scripted out, that are in tools that are free and open and readily available for download. Uh, there are some of these exploits that I just took advantage of in clients a couple of weeks ago. There are YouTube videos of 13-year-olds doing this with free software. So again, just re-emphasizing the fact that the basics are killing us out there. Well, not me, uh, it's, it's doing me a favor, but uh, everybody else. These are the things that uh, we need to focus on. And so this environment here that uh, hopefully we'll walk through, uh, we set up the, the perspective of an attacker. So I am logged in, SSH'd into my attacker box, and the environment is set up as such that I can only see one host externally. And so my goal is going to be like every uh, red, red team event where I'm going to try and attempt to uh, get access to that server, pivot internally, and gain access to other systems inside. So to start, uh, we use a lot of the same tools that IT use, uses, those vulnerability scanners. Uh, that's great data. We have a lot of open source tools, your end maps, and, and different things to do our initial reconnaissance. Bad guys have those tools too. Uh, as Seth mentioned, a lot of times they're even more uh, well-funded than the white hat hackers. Uh, so everything that you have, you better believe that they have as well. To start us off here though, I'm going to uh, do a simple Nmap scan of um, the host that we have externally available. I'm going to let this run and kind of talk a little bit about what we're doing. So uh, we have at the very end the host that I'm going to be scanning. And I'm just going to scan for three ports that are well known, some web ports there, 80 and 443, and then another web port on 8080, which you know, commonly has some administrative functions, uh, web uh, portals and different things. So those results came back real quick. You can see the first two, no luck. Those are both closed ports. Uh, but port 8080, open, great. And then we also have some uh, detail about what the web service is running. So looks like we have Apache Tomcat 5.5. Looks like an outdated version. That's good to know. Good to know. Um, so with this scan results, obviously we'll usually come back with hundreds of hosts, thousands of hosts in some cases. So we need a way to kind of weed through all this data and prioritize. So when we get on an environment, obviously we love to do the fun, hard stuff. We like to you know, uh, accomplish those challenges and things, but we'll prioritize the easy things first. Because uh, you know, wh why not? Why make it harder than it needs to be? So uh, we use a great visual tool. There's a lot of different ways to do this. One of my favorites is a tool called HTTP Screenshot. Uh, again, it's uh, open source, readily available. Uh, it's just a quick command here that um, will go through, use the output of that Nmap scan, and feed it into this script to take a screenshot of, of the services that are available. So we did that real quick. Uh, let's minimize here and go over, watch, oops. Make this a bit bigger. We'll download that screenshot and hopefully pop it open. All right, great. So we confirmed not only is that web service open, but it looks like it's running JBoss. Okay. Not only that, it looks like it's an incredibly old version of JBoss. To my eye, that looks about 4.3-ish, maybe around there. Yeah. Okay. So not only that, but there might, there are some administrative functions on this web server that look like they don't require authentication. So this is great. And again, I couldn't believe it. Even in the time that it took to build this environment and then the intermittent time between now giving this demonstration, we have exploited this at a client uh, to gain access. So these things are still happening, uh, this exact version and vulnerability, in fact. So we'll close this and go back into our screen here. <clears throat> and here uh, in the tool that I'm using is mainly Metasploit. Uh, it's been around for a very long time. The script, or excuse me, the module uh, that we're going to be using for this JBoss exploit, there's a lot of data here, but it's, it's already in Metasploit. It's again, it's been around for a long time. Uh, you can download this tool, populate it just the way I did, find the 13-year-old on YouTube doing this exact same thing and follow along. 
So I populated the uh, remote host in there. You can see the .247 machine, the port that we're going to be targeting, 8080. And just uh, with a simple exploit command, a lot of things happened real quick there. But just to kind of run through it, we hosted a malicious file called a war archive uh, on my attacker box locally. We asked that server, without credentials, without authentication, to download that malicious file and then execute it on the server itself. It reached out uh, to grab a stager to establish a remote communication between that, the victim server and my attacker box. So here we can hopefully see that, um, yep, great. So we have our session established. That's good news. We'll interact with uh, that first session. Not a whole lot of detail here, but if we start typing in some Linux commands, you'll see that I kind of have a little pseudo prompt going on here. So I ran the uname command, so now I know things like it's a Linux box, confirmed its internal IP address, um, I know it's a 64-bit version of uh, this operating system. We can do some other things like, uh, I don't know, run the who am I command. Look at that, I'm running as root. Wow, JBoss, awesome, awesome feature, functionality. <laughs> so this exploit, now I'm root on this box. So as I said before, it's kind of a pseudo shell. You know, there's not a whole lot we could do from here other than, you know, like we're sitting on a terminal, what I want to do is upgrade and kind of firm up my foothold in this box. So I'll background this session, and then I'm just going to make sure um, I'm going to host another payload. I'm going to ask the server to download that and execute it to establish what we call an interpreter session. It's a function of Metasploit. Uh, it's used a lot, quite often, but it will give us some advanced features later on that we'll take advantage of. So uh, in order to do that, I'm going to pop over to a different screen here. I'm going to make sure that my payload is where it should be on my web server. Yep, looks like it's there. We're going to do make sure my web server is running. All right, everything looks good there. So we'll pop back over to our session, interact with that again. Let's type correctly. There we go. All right, and um, I'm going to run a, just a, a fast wget command <coughs> to my attacker box, which let's see here. Make sure my IP address is correct. Great. And we're going to download that uh, exploit file that I named met, because I'm creative. We can list the directory, we can scroll up a little bit. Look, there it is. All right, so it downloaded on this box. We will make it executable, and then we'll run it. So again, I'm running this exploit on this server, logged in as if I was sitting at a console. And uh, again, that uh, payload that I downloaded and executed is reaching back out to my attacker box again for a second time. But now we're establishing a much more uh, firm session a background session one, show that again. Now we have two. Now I'll interact with that second one. And so now we're in an interpreter session. Now we're kind of on a, in a shell session on steroids. We have a lot of pre-built uh, functionalities in here. Um, so I can run commands like sysinfo <coughs> and again get this kind of that basic information about the box. Uh, but now I have my foothold. Now I'm established in this environment, and I can do a lot from here. But before I do, I'll toss it over to Neil. How do you say, how, what do you think about that? How I think I feel? can take care of it. I think I can right. take care of it. You think so? Doesn't make me feel good, though. No warm and fuzzies. All right. <laughs> Has anybody seen uh, or had any uh, penetration testers come in and you've actually seen this yourself um, at all? So, question for Victor. Uh, like, I'm sure what you showed, like 90% of that, you scripted that, right? That's you? in your gigantic brain. No, I wish, I wish. But no, these tools, I mean, it's, it's as simple as just piping in those commands, the IP address, the port, uh, and then hitting the, the exploit command in that terminal. So it's all done for you. It's, it's work done by uh, you know, researchers and security professionals and hackers uh, in the past that you know, the shoulders that I'm standing on or that these script kitties are standing on uh, to be able to take advantage of this and make real world impacts with the exploitation they're doing. So just a quick introduction for myself, uh, Neil Parisi, I'm with BMC Software. Uh, I work alongside Seth, I'm a principal solution engineer uh, in the data center automation and cloud space. 
so before we get right into the remediation aspects of this, I just want to clarify something with Victor, and maybe you all caught it too. So we're all using, you mentioned vulnerability scanning tools. We're all using those in our environments to help keep hackers like yourself out of, out of our environments, right? To yep. find those weak spots, hurry up and get them patched. But you're saying that the hackers out there are using the same exact ones to same. find those soft spots Absolutely. and then figure out how they can penetrate the environment. I have, I have better licensing than you. I have better support than you. I mean, it's, it's absolutely. If the tools exist, we're using them. So it's scary, right? I mean, and that, at this point, it pr pretty much becomes a race to the finish line. Who can get there first? Can you patch before they can penetrate? Um, and we all use these tools because they provide us with tons of great information, right? They provide us with basic information about the vulnerabilities themselves, remedi potential remediation information for those vulnerabilities, whether it's a patch, configuration change, things like that. Um, the, the one problem, though, with that information is that it's not directly actionable from those reports. So that's what we kind of want to demonstrate today, is how can we enhance that information and make it better and make it a lot easier for you to patch and get those vulnerabilities remediated faster. So I'm logging into what uh, Seth had mentioned earlier, which is uh, our new product called Threat Director, and it looks like I was timed out. So just give me a moment to log back in. Um, and once I do get in, I'm going to proceed directly to what we're calling the Operator Dashboard. Uh, and we also have something called the security dashboard, which we'll talk a little bit about later. And that'll be of interest for, for you guys that are uh, more security focused in here as opposed to operations focused. So if I proceed to the operator dashboard, I'm going to be presented with some filtering options. But the first thing I want to do is make sure I have all my scan data selected uh, so we can get a holistic view of all the scans that I've uploaded. So these scans that I was just referring to are directly from the vulnerability scanners out there. You can log into those directly, export them, and upload, in, upload them into this system and be presented with this, this pretty looking view, right? We can uh, immediately filter by CVE identifier, operating system, severity level, and server group. And for those of you that are familiar with Blade Logic, a server group is, is a, just a way to either statically or dynamically group servers uh, within the environment. Now we also have the concept of SLAs in the system where you can define SLAs for specific vulnerability severities that need to be, uh, that help you, the SLAs will define how quickly the vulnerabilities need to be remediated within your environment. So for example, I can set an SLA for a severity five vulnerability to 30 days, and that information will be represented on these charts here. So the first chart that we'll see down below here is vulnerability um, status, and also gives some age information. So this is my open vulnerabilities in the environment. You can see I still have some older ones out here, but maybe that's okay. Um, but I still have, definitely have some work to do. Um, I see that I have a, a lot that are exceeding SLA, and as of today, I have 198 uh, vulnerabilities exceeding SLA and 160 that are within SLA. So it, it gives me a kind of a, a focal point of where I may need to focus my attention for my remediation efforts. Uh, for this specific one, we know that we want to focus on JBoss. So if I scroll down a little bit more on the screen, uh, it actually happens to be the one showing up on the top. That was not by design. Uh, but this, this data set down here is actually what my actionable data set is. So this is how we make the, actionable, the information from those scans immediately actionable. Uh, what I'm going to do is filter from the top here to narrow this selection, because I don't want to necessarily remediate everything all at once. And we know that this was JBoss, and I know that I have JBoss within my DMZ, so I'm going to filter on a server group for where I have all my DMZ servers um, grouped together. And I can scroll down, and now I see that I just have this one specific vulnerability on this one target that needs to be remediated within that DMZ server group. In order to do that, all I need to do is click this Remediate button. And this is going to launch me into a brief wizard where I can just provide a remediation uh, name for this. And on the next screen here, it's going to ask me just to confirm what, the, uh, what I actually want to remediate. If there was more than one object here, I could unselect that, but I'm just going to move forward with remediating this because it's one. I have some various uh, scheduling options here, which we'll talk about in a moment, but I'm just going to proceed with executing the remediation just to get that running. And this is just a confirmation that the operation is being created, and it should eventually <coughs> excuse me, show up on the... Uh, the, uh, the home screen here. So what that was is that was actually an example of a vulnerability that, it, that pertains to more of a configuration change rather than a patch. So I used the uh, Blade Logic packaging technology to use the vendor provided recommendation configuration settings and uh, map that uh, remediation to that specific vulnerability. Now all I did was create that package. At this point, this system behind the scenes is, uh, is creating the job for it. It's going to execute it against that target. It'll take just a moment to run. 
Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll see, we'll hand it back over to Victor and he'll verify that he can no longer exploit that particular vulnerability. Uh, so this should wrap up in just a moment. So we're back to that uh, JBoss main deployer module in Metasploit. We'll just run our show options again, just so that we can verify that we're still targeting the exact same server, uh, .247, uh, same port, all the exact same options as I mentioned. This time we will type in exploits. All right, so again, looks like we started off well. Uh, we had staged our war file again, just like last time, but in the middle of execution, we get a warning. Looks like the website now asks for authentication. All right, good job. One point for the good guys. <laughs> Well done. So at this point, uh, I already have my session established from before it was remediated, so I still have my foothold. But if this would have been remediated in the first place, I would have looked elsewhere. I would have seen the JBoss version, gotten super excited about the potential exploit, and then saw how it was configured correctly and looked for the next thing, the next lowest fruit hanging from that tree. And uh, obviously, I'll look for as many ways as I possibly can to get into an environment, but when you're talking about uh, you know, um, a, a hacker, they're, they don't particularly care what the organization is. Maybe they're real passionate and focused on a single organization for you know, some reason or another, but most of the time they're just looking for the easy and the quick. So uh, at this point I wouldn't have been able to get in, not using this vulnerability, but since I am, do you mind if I keep looking around and see what I can see? Does it matter what I think at this point?